How much do you guys remember the early days of Fortnite? Do you guys remember the old seasons like the back of your hand? Or have you mostly forgotten how things used to be? Let's find out. What up guys, welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Christoph, and I'm super excited for today's video because we're going to be taking it back to the good old days. I mean all the way back. We're gonna be asking you guys 10 true or false questions that only OGs will know how to answer. And if you guys are interested in getting better at Fortnite this season, make sure to check out ProGuides.com using the description link below. We have a ton of coaches that are ready to help you guys out right now. Ready to play with you, ready to help you guys start winning more games. What are you waiting for? Click that description link. All right guys, now on to the quiz. So the spike trap. Some of us love it and some of us hate it. Get too close to one of these dangerous metal devices and you'll get impaled for 150 damage. But there was a time where the trap dealt only 75 damage. Is this true or false? It may be hard to believe, but this is in fact true. When traps were initially added to the game, they did 125 damage. Then, in what seemed like an entirely random move, Epic in Season 4 decided to lower it to 75 damage. Everyone was baffled by this change. Players didn't really complain about traps back in the day. They couldn't even be used in combat effectively. So the only time you'd die to one is if you walked into an area without peeking around a corner and checking for traps. So there didn't seem to be any logic behind the change. Maybe an employee at Epic was tired of entering doorways and getting whacked. Who knows? Either way, around three weeks later, that's when the damage was doubled to the 150 it still is at today. I don't know guys, sometimes it felt like Epic was just winging the whole balance changes thing. Okay, moving on to question number two. Pretty much every keyboard and mouse player shoots by pressing left click, but there used to be a time where some pros would shoot using their keyboard. What do you guys think? Is this true or is this false? I know it seems like it makes zero sense, but this was actually true. It was part of a technique known as crouch peeking, where if you could uncrouch, shoot, and crouch fast enough again, it made it so that opponents couldn't see your character model while you laid in shots from behind cover. It was a completely broken tactic at the time. The only difficulty was performing all those actions at once. So people came up with a keybind plan, which became popularized by Tfue on his channel. With this strategy though, you'd bind F1 to jump to make your character uncrouch, F2 to shoot, and F3 to crouch again. If you repeatedly spam those three keys in succession, you'd perform perfect crouch peaks. So people have been binding an alternative bound, jump would be F1, fire would be F2, and crouch would be F3. That way, when they're on a ramp like this, they can just put their fingers right on the F keys like this and just... The technique was so broken that Epic, of course, patched it out as soon as they could, but there was still a time where pros abused the heck out of it. All right, guys, on to question number three. So this time it's going to be a statement. Renegade Raider was the tier 100 battle pass skin for season one. Is this true or is this false? While Renegade Raider was one of the most exclusive skins available in Season 1, it wasn't a Battle Pass skin. In fact, Season 1 didn't have a Battle Pass at all. To obtain her, players first had to reach level 20 in-game. Once they did that, the skin would become available to them for 1200 V-Bucks in what was called the Season Shop. Other available cosmetics included the Aerial Assault Trooper, his Glider, and the Raider's Revenge Pickaxe. Man, that one looks sharp. Although the skins were awesome at the time, players hated this model of season rewards. It didn't really feel like a reward when you had to grind levels and then end up paying the full purchase price for a skin. That's why in season two, Epic scrapped the whole thing and ended up implementing the wildly successful battle pass system. All right, now moving on to question number four. The ridiculous chicken skin you rarely see, the Tender Defender, was inspired by a fan drawing. Is this true or false? Well guys, I hate to break it to you, but it is actually true. The Tender Defender was a concept created by Connor, an eight-year-old Fortnite fan that wanted nothing more than to see his design make it into the game. The drawing got posted online by Connor's dad in September 2018 and completely blew up. 
enough to cause a more seasoned artist to drop an entire kit for the Chicken Trooper, including a glider, back bling, pickaxe, and even an emote. And it looks pretty much exactly like what we have in-game today. When the Tender Defender was revealed to be coming out, people wondered if Epic had shamelessly stolen the idea or not. Well, we all know that Epic had some controversy with that in the past. But the creator of the second drawing indeed confirmed that he had talked with the devs. Moments like these where Epic connects with the community are what make them so great. Even if we sometimes can't agree with the direction they take their game, it shows at least that they care. Man, just look at Connor's reaction to see his skin in the shop. It's so awesome. Okay, what's in the item shop? And, ooh, that's isn't awesome. That, isn't that the skin you Tinder Defender! What? Is that yours? What? What? Is that yours? It's yes. in the game! You did it, dude. Is that Epic really took this kid's wish and made it come true. Okay, so now on to question number five. Epic gave everyone a ton of free stuff in the Christmas event a couple of months ago, but in the past, they've been a bit more stingy when it comes to handing out skins. The first time that free-to-play users could receive a battle pass without spending any money was in season seven. Is this true or is this false? Well guys, it is actually not true. The season seven battle pass cost 950 V-Bucks, just like all the ones before it. It wasn't until toward the end of the season that Epic released overtime challenges for all to enjoy. And if you completed at least 13 of them, you'd be granted the battle pass in season eight for free. But the thing is, season eight wasn't even the first time users could earn a free battle pass. Let me explain. The Battle Pass was first released in Season 2, and even if you didn't own it, you could still earn 200 V-Bucks through the free rewards. This trend of giving us 200 even if you didn't buy the pass continued into Seasons 3, 4, 5, and 6. If you're good at math, you probably noticed that saving up for 5 seasons would put players at around 1,000 V-Bucks, just enough to purchase the Battle Pass for Season 6, all without paying a dime. Okay, so question number 6. Way back in Season 2, there used to be a prize of 50 V-Bucks for every Victory Royale you got until Epic removed the feature because players were getting way too many V-Bucks for free. Is this true or false? Well, now I felt like I've dreamt about this before, but sadly, there was never a V-Buck reward for winning matches. Although I do think it would be an awesome idea, I think that Epic doesn't want to give away free money. And although it's been a repeated suggestion since the very beginning, seems as if V-Bucks are just too valuable for Epic to give away. And I mean, think about it, if Epic was to hand out V-Bucks for every win, it'd only be the top percentage of players benefiting anyways, and they want to make it fun for all. However, it's been recently suggested that Epic change the Hype Night tournaments into V-Buck Nights, where instead of useless arena points, top players have a chance at winning some item shop currency. I think that's a fantastic change, but I don't know if Epic will ever be making it. Speaking of V-Bucks, does the V stand for virtual? What do you guys think? Is this true or false? Well, I mean, virtual bucks, it sounds right. That's pretty much what they are, but that's not what the V stands for. This is false, guys. If any of you guys play Save the World, you'll know that the V actually stands for Vendor Tech. Just to explain to everyone that doesn't play, Vendor Tech is the company behind a lot of the technology in the Fortnite world, like pickaxes, weapons, and gliders. You can even spot their logo on the battle bus and on the side of every supply drop. I guess you could say they played a pretty significant role when it came to kicking off the Fortnite storyline. While other details behind this strange company are vague, there are theories that Vendor Tech is actually behind a lot of the troubles in the Fortnite world. The story states that they made all the weapons and gadgets to help defend against the oncoming storm, but players theorize that Vendor Tech actually created the storm as a way to profit off of all the madness. We're not too deep into Save the World lore, so if we miss some crucial details, be sure to mention them in the comments. Okay, now on to question number eight. We all know that when you find grenades on the ground or in a chest, they come in a stack of three. But it wasn't always like that. There was a time where if you found grenades, it'd only be a single one. Is this true or false, guys? Yup, you got it, it's true. Grenades used to come in a stack of one, not the three that we're used to today. But it was during a time very, very early on in Fortnite's development. 
before the game was even free to play, which might be why almost nobody's aware of this fact. On the day that the game went free to play, Epic released patch 1.6.3, which featured not only the grenade stack size change, but also a ton of features that would end up becoming staples. Supply drops, duo and squad game modes, the ability to drop ammo, all of these were added in this update right here. With how often competitive players complain about the grenade, I feel as if a lot would actually love to see them start dropping in stacks of one again. But seriously though, it's pretty crazy to see how different Fortnite was in the past. All right, guys, on to question number nine, the mysterious purple cube that first appeared back in season five as part of the storyline wasn't ever given an official name, so the community decided to call it Jim. Is this true or false? Well, Jim would have been a sweet name, but the community actually decided to call him Kevin. And the story behind naming Kevin is one of those things that makes me adore the Fortnite player base. So basically the Fortnite BR subreddit had way too many discussions being made about the cube. So the moderators started deleting any posts with the word cube in it. To get around the filter, somebody actually suggested calling it Kevin. There wasn't some organized movement or anything, it just organically stuck because Kevin is such a silly name for an inanimate object. Epic even carried on the name in Chapter 2 by calling the company behind Steamy Stacks Kevolution Energy. You can also find a tribute to Kevin there in the form of a statue located in the parking lot. Okay guys, and our last question, question number 10. Is this statement true or false? There was a period in time where a significant amount of players preferred a blue burst rifle over the purple or gold scars. Is it true? Is it false? Well guys, it seems very surprising, but this is in fact true. Not everyone preferred it, but before first shot accuracy was introduced into the game in Season 3, the blue burst dealt incredible headshot damage. It had a multiplier of 2.5 compared to the regular 2 times multiplier on the standard AR, meaning despite the lower base damage, a single bullet from a blue burst to the head would deal 75 damage more than a gold scar. Landing just one would be enough to turn the fight around, but since it's a burst rifle, you could potentially land two or even three headshots in a single firing, enough to take down players with plenty of health. The most notable downsides, however, were the inconsistent bloom and lower damage per second against structures, which ultimately made it preferred whether or not you wanted to use one. The headshot multiplier, however, was eventually lowered, making them only deal 60 damage, and thus the era of the blue burst had ended. So what do you guys think? Did you guys get all 10 questions? Are you a true OG? And if you got between five and nine, you are almost OG status. And if you scored five or below, don't feel bad. The questions were tough. And if you didn't play the game back then, the answers are still pretty tough to figure out. That's it for the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I wanna know how many answers you guys got right down below. Put them in the comments. Keith Allen and I read them all. And just as a reminder, if you guys want to get better at Fortnite for next season, Make sure to check out ProGuys.com using the description link below. Go find your pro coach right now. Thanks for watching.